The chimes of time bring out the news Another day is through Someone slipped and fell Was that someone new? You may have longed for added strength and courage to renew. Do not be disheartened, for I bring hope for you. It is no secret what God can do. What is done for others, He'll do for you. For in God's light you never walk alone Always feel at home Wherever you may roam There is no power can conquer you For God is on your side just take him and his promise don't run away and hide it is no secret what God can do what is done for us It is no secret, and there are no secrets with God, dear viewers and listeners. No secrets at all, and God does not like secrets because where there are secrets, there's a cover up of sin, there's a cover up of evil, and so all that has to be swept away. And whether people like it or not, there will come a time. Because Jesus is coming back soon when there will be absolutely no secrets and everybody's dark secrets of every dark secret society will be shouted from the rooftops. So today, the secret of Kirkham. This is a place that we're looking at today as we continue with our program of prayer and intercession for the Rins. And after that, for the key workers in this area. And today, we're going to a place, quite a big village, on the, towards the north end of the Rins. And it's called, it, well, it looks like Kirkholm, but it's actually called, properly pronounced, Kirkham. So, what is the secret of this village? Well, it's got a bit of an argument about its name. Okay, it is 
It's bounded on the north and west, this parish and this village, by the sea. And on the east side, there is the Bay of Loch Ryan. And on the south, the next parish is Leswalt. So the name Kirkham, some people say that it means Kirk Colm, which is short for the Church of St. Columba. But all the time, even from earliest days, even from the 13th century, the early spellings of the name Kirkham, which are all the L end in C U M. So that casts doubt on that interpretation, as does the modern local pronunciation, which I've said is still Kirkham. So who is the saint, if it's not Columba, that was actually referred to by the name? Well, it's mentioned in the 14th century papal letter, that is letter from the Pope, of 1397 as Saint Common. That's spelled C U W M. I N, okay. Nothing to do with the herb that one uses in cooking, by the way. This is the name of more than one Celtic or Gaelic saint of the early Middle Ages, but the most likely one is a gentleman called Comain Find, F I N D, the seventh abbot of Iona. You'll remember the first abbot of Iona was, of course, St. Columba, who died in. I think 563, I'm trying to remember now, AD. Anyway, this particular one, the seventh abbot, Comen Find, died in AD 669, so over 100 years after Columba. The parish also has a spring known as the Cross Well or St. Columba's Well. But this seems to be, it's, it's likely that this appeared late, this name was given later on after the misunderstanding of the original name Kirkham. Anyway, there's been a lot of activity in and around Kirkham since ancient times. And I'll just give you one or two of the exciting, the most exciting parts of this. Firstly, in the spring of 1307, at the beginning of Robert the Bruce's campaign in the Wars of Independence, which you know all about, to free Scotland from the shackles of Edward I, who was the hammer of the Scots, he was known as, by the way. He, Robert the Bruce, sent two forces, two armies, armies to gain control of southwest Scotland. Now, sadly, the one force was led by his two brothers and consisted of 18 war galleys. It landed in Loch Ryan, but... As I've said, sadly, they were immediately overwhelmed by local forces led, led by Dougal MacDougall, great name, of the famous clan MacDowell, a very powerful clan at that time on the Rins. Now, um, unfortunately for Robert the Bruce, this particular clan supported the rival claimant to the kingship of Scotland, uh, the, the Comyn family. And the, one of the, that family, um, Robert the Bruce, actually murdered in, beside the altar of a church and had to repent afterwards in sackcloth and ashes, which he did. And he came to Whithorn as well to repent when he was already dying of his last disease. Another very interesting feature is the Kilmory Stone or Cross Slab. And this is an early medieval stone, which is now located in Kirkham Churchyard, having been moved from the site of the Kilmory Chapel, from which it gets its name, next to St Mary's Well, in the 18th century, and built into Kirkham Church, of which more later. But the interesting designs on that cross slab combine, this is very interesting, Christian and Norse imagery, because guess what, I'm sure most, many of you might know this, but there is, are two heritages really in the area of Galloway, one being Viking, the other Celtic, Viking and Celtic together, and this is on this stone, one face of the stone has an elaborately carved cross above a design of intertwined snake-like animals. Well, you get that a lot in Celtic designs, the intertwined 
animals. On the reverse side is a representation of the crucifixion. And this is interesting. Below it is the figure of a man with a pair of tongs and a bird on his shoulder. Unusual. Who may represent one of the Norse pagan gods, Odin or Sigurd. So what is thought is then that the mixture of carvings and cultures on the Komori stone represent the triumph of Christianity over paganism. Which brings us to the church itself. The old parish church of Kirkham, which was on the, in the grounds of Corswell House, was demolished in 1821 and a new church was built in Kirkham, up the hill from the old kirk. In 1950, Kirkham Church of Scotland was united with Ervy Free Church. And in 1985, the church became linked finally with Leswalt Parish Church. Of course, all these churches had Kirk sessions. And it's interesting to see and reflect on what the original purpose and what still went on in the 18th and perhaps early 19th century with the Kirk session. It was held in the court of the parish. So it was like it was, it did have the duties of a court, really. In, in, as part of its duties. It was made up of the minister, the local landowners and businessmen of the parish and dealt with moral issues. I mean, many churches had a stool of fornication in them at that time, which was, you know, really where you, where you stood, where you were meant to stand and repent um, before the kirk for misdemeanors and immoral behavior. Minor criminal cases as well, matters of the looking after of the poor and education, matters of discipline and the general concerns of the parish. So that was what it used to be like, the duties of a Kirk session, quite powerful really. Nearby on Craig and Gerrach Hill, there is something called the Marion Hill Monument or Marion Tower. And this is a 19th century uh, monument on a hill about three kilometres or what, nearly two miles west of Kirkham village with beautiful panoramic views across the Firth of Clyde from this location. And it seems to have been a monument to, it's a wee bit disputed about exactly what it was, but a monument to some of the Ross family. Right nearby there is a famous Corswell lighthouse, which we've dealt with before. Really beautiful lighthouse. A very early one, opened as early as 1817, just to remind you, and built by the famous Robert Stevenson engineer, who was the grandfather of the author, Robert Louis Stevenson. And it is still to this day, apart from being a hotel, it's a Category A listed building. Right near it, there's actually the remains of Corswell Castle. There's a Corswell House as well, but this is much older than that. But there's not an awful lot left of it, sadly. It is a ruined 15th century tower house to the southeast of the lighthouse. And it was owned by Alexander Campbell. They get around the Campbells, don't they? A lot of them. It was a very widespread clan. A son of Sir Duncan Campbell of Loudoun, whose elder brother Andrew was Sheriff of Ayr. Um, not much left of it now. It was, a, it was originally three stories high and lay on a mound protected by a ditch. All you can see now are the stumps of the four walls and uh, still with a turnpike stair, a little bit of a turnpike stair left there. But there's been some treasure discovered there. A small cannon was discovered in 1791. And in 1802, a cache, a secret hoard of gold coins, silver plate and jewellery was found there. However, in the 18th century, the castle had already been forsaken. Um, in favour of Corswell House near to the Kirkham village. And so that's very little left of that. Famous people, this is very interesting. There's a very, very famous person from history who was uh, born 
in Kirkham. And he's very well known. And there's a lot of information about him in the nearby Stranraer Museum. And he's a very, very famous explorer called Admiral Sir John Ross, who lived in those days, a very, to a very old age, actually, 1777 to 1856. So he was nearly 80 when he died. And it's, that's even more remarkable when you consider what he went through in his earlier life. Because he was an Arctic explorer, a lot of places, um, I think, probably round about Baffin Island and way up in the north of Canada are named after I think there's a Ross Bay and so on named after him. Anyway, he was the son of a minister, the Reverend Andrew Ross of Balsarach. And he joined the Royal Navy aged nine. So he must have been a little midshipman probably when he joined. And he also served in the Swedish Navy. Between 1818 and 1850, this is remarkable, he led three expeditions to explore the Northwest Passage. And boy, did he suffer. I mean, this isn't in the notes, but I know that, you know, they, they were, they, they were um, how do I put it, completely blockaded by ice, you know, for months. And, and I think they wouldn't have survived it hadn't been for the Eskimos, who are nowadays known as the Inuit who taught them really how to survive. And indeed, there have been many draw there are drawings and paintings from that time they spent ice-bound all these months showing the Eskimos and showing them along with the Eskimos and really, real bad time of suffering. Um, also, quite amusingly, there is a very, 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 very old tin of corned beef dating from that time. One of his ship's supplies, which he... Uh, bequeathed as a gift to a local landowner. I think it might have been the Earl of Stair, I think, from memory. Um, and it's, it was reputed to be still edible many, many, many years later. So what did he do when he got back? He explored the Northwest Passage in the Arctic, far, far north of Canada. And then he built a most amazing building, which is now a hotel, which, of course, typically he called the Northwest Castle in Stranraer, and it's a large and very, very nice to tell, but in the style of a castle, white painted. And that's where he spent his retirement years. His nephew, Admiral Sir James Clark Ross, joined him on Arctic expeditions, and he himself is famous for being the first explorer to reach the North Magnetic Pole in 1831. What an interesting place. What an interesting son of Kirkham. Just um, so another interesting thing from history of Kirkham was that it was once a thriving centre of home-produced muslin, M-U-S-L-I-N, muslin embroidery. But today, of course, it is largely agricultural, like the rest of the Rins. So originally, I also said meant to say to you that far, far back in history, Kirkham wasn't known as Kirkham, but Stewarton. Most interesting place. Nearby, very nearby, is Wig Bay, W I G Bay, and which is a the scar, amazing history of more recent times of the Second World War. So, heading from Stranraer on the road to Kirkham, there's a car park on the right for Wig Bay, and right there, and we've been there. There's a long sand bank jutting out into Loch Ryan. This is called the Scar. And nowadays, it's the home of the largest colony of nesting migrant terns and wading birds as well. Um, huge place, a uh, huge colony, the biggest in Dumfries and Galloway. But as you can see from the picture, Wig Bay was used as the base for flying boats in World War II. Most interesting. And what happened to these flying boats, you may ask? Well, there was an RAF base at Wigby. Unique among Southwest Scotland RAF air airfields, Wigby had no runways at all, because they didn't need them, did they? They were flying boats that went on the water. So it was a base throughout the war for flying boats, particularly short Sunderlands, which were huge, and consolidated Catalinas. 
Situated on the western shores of Loch Ryan, near Stranraer then, the area had already been used for seaplane testing during World War I and became active again during World War II. Three squadrons of Coastal Command flew op operational missions over the Atlantic and Irish Sea from here, and it was also home to a Sunderland Operational Training Unit and a Flying Boat Servicing Unit, which merged with 57 Maintenance Unit. And then in the 1950s, dozens of Sunderlands were stored there, and it was a place for servicing and scrapping flying boats until it closed. Oops, I just dropped my song. It closed <laughs> finally in 1957. So what an interesting place. What an interesting area. Thank you, David. It keeps me right. So what an interesting place. What an interesting area. And let's see what the Lord is saying about Kirkham. Well, this is what we got. I got this morning, Psalm 64. And I think, really, that this is particularly appropriate where any church fellowships are concerned, because this is something that should not be going on. Psalm 64. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. That means the rising up in rebellion of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongues like a sword and bend their bow to shoot their arrows, even bitter words that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. So they're always looking for faults for people and things that they imagine other people have done. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. And all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider of his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. So you see, all the arrows of bitter words come to nothing. And there's an old Scot saying my granny used to give, which is absolutely on the lines of this psalm. She used to say, curses are like chickens. The eye come home to roost. Amen to that. So that is the word for today. And particularly for those who claim that they are Christians and people who go to Kirk the Kirk and who appear to be good and upright people. But are they? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for the great heritage of Kirkham and the, not only the village, but also the parish. Thank you for the beauty of that place and its surroundings, for the glorious sea which thou hast made and the hills, and the beautiful land, and the farmland which thou hast created, and the animals, and the birds, and the people. And thank you for the heroic efforts of so many brave airmen, and their helpers, and engineers, and others, and training staff, who helped to win the war, last war, Second World War, in this area. And we thank you for those few who are still alive who remember these times. That you will bless them in these last days of their lives. And help them to find you if they have not already done so.
So ragira basso cora basonda rakira basonda O rakia masonda rakia masonda O rakia masonda rakira basonda Thus said the Lord, I have seen, I have seen and heard the cries of my saints. And my heart goes out now to the lost in this place. And I see all things. I see the secrets of the heart. I see the words of condemnation, bitter words spoken in secret. There are no secrets with me. I see the weapons of destruction hidden in the deep, deep sea, in the just to the west between Kirkham and Ireland. I see all these things. I see the thoughts and intents of the heart. I see what has been done. I see when there is blood on the land. I see when there is persecution of the righteous. I see all these things. I see the good and the evil. Did I not even create evil? But I am the Lord. I change not. Forever my word is settled in heaven. Listen to me as I cry out over this land today, the land of my saints from the past and from the present. Behold, I come quickly, and my sword, my word will be with me. So repent now and follow me, thus saith the Lord. Amen. So that's the word for Kirkham and that area round about today. And just to end, or almost end our program, let's pray today for the key workers who are on our hearts, particularly in Stranra and the Rins area and the area nearby. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, I lift up before you today those carers who are in fear of the coronavirus, those carers in Glenluce who have the coronavirus, those paramedics in the area who have also been dealing with people, taking people to hospital who may have the coronavirus. I lift them up right now to you, Lord God, that you will take away all fear. You are the healer. You are our healer, our deliverer, our baptizer in the Holy Ghost, our saviour and soon coming king. And with you there is no shadow of turning. And it is true, as a friend of ours prayed last night, that without you there is no healing. Whether you work direct in medical signs and wonders or whether you work through the healing hands of doctors and nurses and other healers, carers. So, Lord, you know you prophesied through your son Jesus Christ that there would be wars and rumors of wars and famines and pestilences and earthquakes in the last days, the shaking of the nations. We know that the whole of creation groans and travails right now under the sin that has been put on the earth through the works of the evil one and his disciples. But we also know that you're Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, that you know the end from the beginning. And Lord, right now, I know that you will stretch out your mercy and compassion to those carers and their families who are suffering from this plague. Lord, may I ask in the name of Jesus, it will make your presence real to them. Lord, and bind up 
in the name of Jesus, that spirit of fear that would seek to take hold of this nation, particularly this area we're talking about. Rebuke and bind that spirit of fear because God has not given us a spirit of fear, as his word says in Timothy, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind through Jesus' name. Amen. And you know, this is a wonderful song just to finish with. There is a river, and it's all about the yeah, river, the river of, life, of life, the Holy Spirit that works in and through believers.
Yes, dear viewers and listeners, you see, that's the river of everlasting life. And all of us who believe and trust in Jesus and have given our lives to him, we are, we have that river within us, the river of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and it will never run dry. And it brings us life. Amen. So, isn't it wonderful? And thank you so much for being with me for this week's intercession program for the Rins and for the carers in the area. And I hope you'll be with me next time and we'll see where we're going. Still on the Rins. And this is Lindsay Griffiths saying, bye now and God bless you. Till next time. Bye.